Hi class, in this video here we're going to continue talking about the relationship between two variables by now talking about time series data. And so what we're really going to do here is we're going to expand the topics of scatter plots, correlation, and regression to just time series data. And I'll explain exactly in one moment what time series data is, but what you're going to notice is a lot of this stuff is uh, very, very similar to what we were doing in the previous lectures. Okay, so let's start by saying, you know, what exactly is time series data? So, so time series data is just data that's indexed to time, meaning in our two variable analysis, one of the variables is time. And usually in, in the examples we're going to do in our class, usually that variable is some year. Okay. So for example, the number of Apple stores worldwide for various years is shown in the table below right here. And you would think, and this is really interesting, you know, generally when I ask people, like, how many stores do you think are worldwide in, you know, even 2020, you know, people list thousands and thousands, but, but, but it's not. And, you know, Apple stores seem very ubiquitous, you know, here, you know, in, in the Northeast. Um, but if you look here at the data, in 2010, there were only 250 Apple stores worldwide. Then by 2012, there were 310. By 2014, there were 380. By 2016, there were 435. 2018, there were 475. And then 2020, okay, there were 517 Apple stores worldwide. All right, so if you look here, what we have is we, we, we have two variables, right? We have a variable for year and a variable, we have variable that, and, and values for the year. And then we have the variable, the number of stores, and we have different values here. So what we wanna do is just apply all the concepts we've been doing to, uh, uh, to, to, to these two variables here. Okay, so when working with time series data, the time variable will always be our predictor variable x. Okay, so time, so the, the, the x variable, the predictor variable will always be time. So whatever your time variable, in this case, it's the year. So it's common in time series analysis to index the time variable to some starting value. So instead of saying, oh, just X is 2010. No, no. In, in our example, what we do is we define the variables as the following. So we're going to say, let's let the variable X. So you notice in my table here, I, I left a, a column open. My variable X is going to be years since 2010. So what I have to do is I have to take my year variable and change it to X. This is how we're going to index it to some starting value. So 2010 is zero years since 2010. 2012 is two years. 2014 is four years since 2010. 16 is six years, eight, and then 2020 is 10 years since 2010. Very, very important. Okay, so always look for this. Okay, because if you just plug in 2010, 2012, and so on in your calculator, you're gonna get um, you're going to get different results. You're going to get a different regression equation, basically. And so then we're going to let y, okay, y be the number of Apple stores since 2010. So since the this x variable right here. And now at this point, okay, at this point here, we have two variables defined. We have an x variable and a y variable right here. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so let's go through and take this data. And now um, you're going to need your graphing calculator. Uh, and, and, and talk about how we do a regression analysis with this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to construct the scatter plot uh, using your TI calculator and comment on the relationship. All right, so grab your calculator. So I'm actually going to reset the calculator, okay, and start from scratch, okay? So to reset my calculator, I'm going to have to go second function, memory, and then it's option number seven then option number one, then option number two, okay. So I've reset everything. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go and back into the catalog and scroll down to diagnostic on and turn that back on. It's a little bit of a pain, but you have to do that every time you reset your calculator, okay? If you reset your calculator and you're like, oh, where, where, where did my R value go? It's because you, you, you didn't turn back on diagnostic on. And then I need to turn my stat plot back on. Okay, so now after I reset my calculator, I, I re-put all the settings back in. So then to, to create the scatter plot, you're just gonna go into stat, 
and under edit here, you're going to input the data that you have here. So you're going to put input these X values that you indexed to the starting year 2010. So you're going to put 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So just you always got what you have to remember then is the variable 10 represents the year 2020 because it's 10 years since 2010. You're going to scroll over to L2. You're going to put the corresponding number of Apple stores worldwide. Four thirty-five, four seventy-five, five seventeen. All right. So then, once you've done that, you have to press the zoom button, and you have to do option number nine here. Always, always. Okay. And look, this is what our scatter plot looks like. All right. So how would you describe that scatter plot using the vernacular that we've talked about in in the previous lectures? Looks like a positive linear relationship. As the number of years have increased, so haven't the number of Apple stores worldwide. So I'm just going to resketch the scatter plot a little bit here just so you can see. You know, just a rough, you know. So we observe a positive linear relationship between the variables. So calculate R. So let's measure the strength of that linear relationship. So again, you're going to go back into your calculator. You're going to press the stat button. You're going to scroll over to calc. And it's option number four. Option number four here. Okay. So you want that lin reg AX plus B. And look, you can see it right here. So it's 0 0.9942 when I round it. So 0.9942. So it's really close to positive one, all right? And here I round it to, to four decimal places. All right, so what's going on here is you have st strong evidence of a positive linear relationship. Okay. So next it says find the regression equation for x and y. Okay, so that is that y is equal to ax plus b. All right, and so what is y? Okay, y is the number of Apple stores worldwide. I'm just gonna put number of Apple stores. And just so we're clear here, what is X? X is years since 2010. Okay, so years since 2010. So look, you can see right here in your calculator, you know, I'll round this to two decimal points. Uh, your, your calculator just immediately gives it to you right there on the same screen, all right? So my A, my slope is 26.93. times x plus 259.86. And look, I'm going to show you that this fits the data really well. Okay, I'm going to plot it into my calculator so you can see it. So to do that, remember, you hit the y equals button and you get 26.93 times x plus 259.86. And then you're just going to hit graph. And look, right there, you can see it, it, it fits the data really well. So we're good. We're awesome. OK, so the next thing it says, it says, look, let's now estimate the number of Apple stores in the year 2023. But this is where you have to be careful. You just can't take 2023 and plug it in there. The year 2023 is 13 years 
okay, since 2010. So we're gonna not, pl don't plug in 2023, okay? Got That's a common mistake that I always see. So just make sure that you plug in, you know, X, the number of years since 2010, which is 13 years. So y is, that would then be equal to 26.93 times 13 plus 259.86. So with your calculator, looks like 609.95, so basically 610. So we estimate that in 2023, there will be 610 Apple stores worldwide. Boom, we got it. So basically, it's the same type of analysis that we've done in all the previous lectures. You just have to check, you just have to make sure whatever the x value is, whatever it tells you to index to, make sure you take your year and change it to this, okay? All right, let's do another example. All right, we'll do one more. All right, so the table to the left shows the percentage of American adults who smoked for various years since 1970. So if you look here, so like in 1970, it was saying 37.4% of adults um, smoked. And then you can see it's decreasing. As years have gone up, the percentage has decreased. And then by 2015, it was down to 15.1%. So notice how I started in the year 1970. So here's what I'll do. I'm gonna say let X be equal to years since 1970. And then I'm going to let y be equal to the percent percentage of American adults who smoked at x years since 1970. All right, so I'm going to leave the percent I'm I'm going to I'm not going to change it to a decimal. I'm actually going to leave the numbers like this. So this is gonna be my x, I'm gonna to have to do a new x variable, and over here is gonna be my y. So, so, so look how I do this, right? So 1970 is zero years, since 1970, 1980 is 10 years, uh, 1990 is 20 years, and you can see what's going on here, right? So this is 30 years, this is 31 years, and then, you know, what is this? This is 45 years since 1970. Okay, 45 years since 1970. So let's let's go through and take a look and see you know what we got. Okay. So the first thing says construct the scatter plot using your TI calculator and comment on the relationship. Okay. So we're gonna have to go back. I'm gonna have to clear everything out that I've done. Okay. And you're just going to start the process, okay? So your x variable is going to be 0, 10, 20, 30, 31, and then 45. It's got some weird years going on in there. And then put the percentage in. So 37.4, 33.2. Twenty-three point one, nineteen point four, and then 15.1. Okay, so we want to construct the scatter plot now. So again, let's hit zoom, and then you always got to go to, to number nine. And you should see something that looks like this. And you can absolutely, it's not great, it's not great, but you can absolutely see the um, 
the negative linear relationship that's going on here, okay? So look, you know, I'm just gonna roughly, you know, try to do it again, but. So again, we observe a negative linear relationship. negative linear relationship. So next it says calculate the value of R, the linear correlation coefficient. And again, the good news is it, your, your calculator just does this for you, right? So we're going to press stat button. You go over to calc and it's option number four. And because there's a negative linear relationship, R should be negative here. And yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing. R is equal to negative 0 0.9854 when I round it to four decimal places. So 0 0.9854. So that's really close to negative one. So we have strong evidence of a negative linear relationship. Strong evidence of that negative linear relationship. All right, so next it says find the regression equation. Okay, and so just so we're clear, what y is here, y is the percentage who smoked. I'm going to put of adults who smoke. In x, just remember, x is years since uh, 1970. So y is equal to negative 0 0.51. I'll go to two decimal points here. Negative 0 0.51 times x plus 37.19. And let's just check, right? You know, as I've been doing, let's just check to verify that it fits the data well, okay? So y is equal to negative 0 0.51 times x plus 37.19. Yeah, look, look how well it fits the data. It does a really, really good job going through the data. All right, so then the last question Estimate the num estimate the number estimate it's a little bit of a typo. Estimate sorry about that. The percentage of American adults who smoked in uh, 2020. Sorry about that typo. Um, okay, so remember what X is. X is years since 1970. Okay. So the year 2020, that's X is equal to 50, because that's 50 years. 50 years since 1970. So you're going to plug you got you're going to plug 50 in. So you get y is equal to negative 0 0.51 times 50 plus 37.19. And let's see what we get. And you get 11.69. So remember, this, this represents now a percentage. So then we estimate that in 2020, 11.69% of adult Americans, American adults, are smokers. And hopefully, uh, hopefully it continues to fall. Okay, hopefully it continues to fall. All right, class. So again, time series stuff. You just got to change the year to whatever the the variable tells you to index to, and then you just follow through with everything we've been doing in all the previous lectures. And as always, I'm here if you if you need anything.